Good morning. I'll just wait a few minutes before everyone wakes up. Literally. So this is Nemi Batstone here and I am with Nemi's Crafty Cafe and a uh, part of Alana Wharf's um, team. So I'm just going to give everyone a few minutes or just, I'm going to wait until I see at least four people on here because then that means you've all just woken up and started to join me. So while we're waiting, I am, because many of you are probably gonna catch this on the replay since it's like 10 a.m. and um, super windy outside. Uh, I live outside of Winnipeg. Um, just behind Birds Hill Park. So the wind is crazy and we are in sweats and a very warm sweater. Um, I'm dressed for the occasion with my shirt. Oh, it's reversed. That says I have OCD, which is obsessive crafting disorder. And I have my coffee ready, um, which is a crop and create mug, but I thought it was perfect because that is what we are doing today. We are creating and delivering you a um, full day or full weekend of inspiration and ideas on what to buy and what to create with the new annual catalog. So if you're here, just say here, cause then I know that you're here. Um, not sure if Alana is there or not and if she could um, say hello as well, cause then I know I've got okay, but so far I only see one person. So I'm not too sure if anyone else is there, but hey, why don't I just do this? So I'll just give you all, I guess I should have set up my other screen. Then that way I would have known if I'm working or not and I can just continue on. And all of you can just catch the replay. So my other stand just happened to um, break so I'm just uh, having to hold my hand until I can flip us down onto the table. Um, so I'm just gonna set up real quickly here and hopefully get us going. But again, I only see one, so I'll wait till there's, okay, maybe two, four might be pushing it since it is quite early in the morning. And everybody, um, I think it's that means oh I see two I see two so we're getting there um, I'm just gonna if I just turn on my other screen it's a lot different when you don't own when there's so many of us that own the page so and own the group but it's all good all good I say let's see if my notifications turn me on so today we have a jam-packed day. So while we're waiting for people to come on, I'll just go through. So when you watch the replay, you will catch, um, I'm not sure why it's not letting me comment. That is fine. Um, the only thing I can think of is to hop back out or um, and come back in. But I think as long as it's recording and it's playing on the page so you can catch it later, that's what's most important. I know it's more fun to be live with me because I am going to, during my live tutorial, obviously <laughs> have you all participate in helping me design. But if I can't, because that's just the way I like to roll, because um, we do have an hour together. And if I can't, then that is what I won't have that option. Okay. It's so hard to find the page because how many of you have a million, like groups that you're part of so trying to find it is just like wow trying to find a needle in a haystack some days um okay oh nope yeah it's so hard to find anything okay so i'm just gonna search myself so while i'm trying to set up here i just want to remind you all that we are on here hour by hour so every hour as you're going through, you will catch um, a different event. And I see, yeah, I can't see it on there as a, 
It's only letting us, I don't know. So um, do you want me to log off and log back in? Oh, I see Cindy Boyd, Keenly. Oh, I'm at nine. I'm at nine, so I should be good. But I can't find my Facebook page. I can't find my live. So I can't see your comments right now. Um, hey, hi, Mel. Oh, thanks for saying hi. Oh, good morning, Dawn. At least you're all catching it. I cannot find myself on my other screen here. It's like way, way down there, I think. Um, so I'm glad you can see me <laughs> because I can't see myself. So technical difficulties as always. Hi, Marilyn. Oh, good morning, Karen. Yay, we are now racking up. Oh, there we go. I just had to refresh and I was able to find myself. So that is fantastic. So what I'm going, now I'll be able to see your comments, which is great. Oh, hi, Janet. Good morning, Carrie. Hi, Linda. I think you had to be approved. Hoping you find yourself now. Oh, yes. I think I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Exactly, Linda, right? Yay. <laughs> okay. So I got my coffee in hand because it's way too early. My breakfast is still on the table behind me. Um, but I'm here and it's all working. So, um, if you just caught me now, I'm just, uh, just a reminder, we're here on every hour, um, and moving forward till four o'clock. So, and then five o'clock, I believe is wrap up. So let's just get started. Screw that. I'm going to flip you. Okay. Here's my table. Just a little bit of dizziness as I get you set up here. Oops, camera flipped. So you don't want to see my boring ceiling there as we're trying to renovate. And I'm currently living in my garage temporarily. That's my current temporary studio for those of you who don't know. Um, and I'll zoom you in. Okay, today we are talking about what's cooking. I don't know why, but every time I see this, I'm like, what's up, doc? I think it needs one of those. And then I think of Bugs Bunny and the carrot in his mouth. Okay, so what's cooking? What's cooking is on page um, 34 of the catalog. I would like to point out that this does not have any matching DSP or anything that else that coordinates with it, which is why it is like um, something new. Um, well, not something new, which is why it's something unique and fun because it forces you to have to really go out of your zone. So the reason why I bought this was because my son is no closed caption. Uh-oh. Um, don't ask me how to do that. I'm so sorry, Linda. I don't know how to do that. Maybe Alana can't, but I didn't even think of it. My apologies. Um, maybe it can turn on after. I'll take a look at that later with Alana and see if we can make that work. Um, so the reason I bought this is because my son, my youngest son, has, um, taken a huge liking to cooking. So when I saw this right away, I was like, recipe book. So I'm going to show you some fun stuff. Um, I don't want to show you my stuff just yet, but what I thought I would do is case a little bit of the caddy with a twist. So um, if you know me, I always go through huge inspiration by going through the catalog and finding all the beautiful pictures that are in there to get us where we need to go. Okay, so to start, my live is going to consist of something fun and different. I am not going to do, well, I shouldn't say that I'm not. We are going to create one card, but what we're going to do first is play with um, some tools or packaging. So in, the, in our catalog, we have, let's see if I'm on the right page here. Um, we have all these different types of packaging, and I believe Alana shared with you last night the jar. So we saw that, and um, these ombre bags are fantastic. But we're going to play with the paper pumpkin kit, or paper pumpkin box. And the paper pumpkin box comes like this, and you actually get 10 in a pack, and they come like this. These are food safe, and um, I don't know if it actually tells you on the front. Oh yeah, there. It'll always say food safe if they are food safe. So these are food safe and easy to use, but they are absolutely awesome. You can fit a lot in those little boxes and I have. So today we're gonna create with that. 
And the other thing we are going to do, because one of my projects that I'm going to share with you at the end, used item number six on page 127, which is the assorted memories and more. So I love the memories and more packs. So everybody on my team, um, I am a silver elite, so I have about a dozen team members. They all know that uh, I love memories and more. And I love the six by eights. And I don't use memories and more just for albums. I use them for creating cards. And I'm going to show you how you do that today. Because you can with any of our stamp sets. Okay, so let's begin. And like I said, we are going to... I thought of leaving this out, but I don't think I will. So I thought we would case the caddy a bit with a twist. Okay, thanks Alana. Thanks for looking into that. Okay, so here's the stamp sets, all 13 of them, absolutely stunning. Here's a little tip that I like to do. I like to take this um, and photocopy the front. I'm just gonna bring it down a bit. Photocopy this on my copier, and then I usually stick one here on the inside. I trim it down and then stick a copy here on the inside of my um, D or stamp case. And then what I can do is then now line up all my stamps. So then if I'm missing one and I actually see the word, it automatically tells me I am missing one. So I don't have to sit there and count 13. All I have to do is go, oh, there's one missing. Where did I drop it? Where did I leave it? You know, and I can stick that in there. I also like to create templates. So this comes with a bunch of amazing dies and I will show you a card that we created. Um, last Thursday and it ended up me having to use a die so um, this die now becomes my template which I like to stick here so if I have templates on anything they go there so that's just a little storage tip and idea for you um, so moving forward and here's all the different dies you get so you pretty much get everything and the addition of a whisk and the chopping board and those are Two that I will definitely highlight and share with you today. Okay, so while we're creating, and now that I can actually see all of you, like I said, we're using the Memories and More pack. So there are two Memories and More pack, and this one matches the Remember, Remembering stamp set, the one with the calendar, um, which I can't wait to play with as well. And it comes with um, four sticker, sticker um, sheets, which is awesome. I love stickers, love stickers. Thanks, Janet. I thought, yes, it is a really fun and easy way to keep your stuff together. And then they always come with um, four by sixes, so easy, ready to go. And like I say, I love to create cards with these and lots of people struggle sometimes. And then you have a bunch of three by fours. So we're going to use some of these. So one of the three by fours we're going to copy and I'm going to put these here. I'm going to give you an option of three. So we have, this one will be left, middle, right. Do I need to put stickies on that? So you just start commenting and letting me know which one of these you want to use on a card front. So this is left, middle, right. Or you could say um, yellow, smush, rainbow, or plaid. Whichever, middle. Okay, Marilyn's already saying middle. So if I get another one, we're going with middle. So I just wanted to highlight real quickly too the hand penned one and this one comes with two sticker sheets but you get four you get double of everything well middle okay we're already going that way oh even Janet everybody we got lots of votes for the middle so that's the one we're gonna go with and then this one's the hand penned so this one I've only got half the pack here because I've already used the other half you get two of everything, so you can't go wrong, and you can cut these, chop them, whatever you like. Do not be afraid, my friends. Do not be afraid. They are fun to use. It's like cutting your stamps. Do not be afraid, although I am afraid, and um, Ashley, she is part of, um, she's part of my team, and she shared some amazing photos where she actually cut and shared how her stamp looked, and I was like, what volume is off i watched you use zoom with facebook live it was perfect at work okay are you telling me i'm volume off i don't i hope not okay 
Um, just clarify. Okay. Oh, okay, Linda was saying talking to Alana. Okay, I can ignore that one. Let's get back to work. Okay, so creation number one. I said we were going to do a paper pumpkin box. So um, I love 3D projects. So 3D projects are um, lots of fun because it's a good way for me to give gifts away. Even bundling your cards, if you have lots of them, they're great to give away. So you can see one side shiny, and I've done this so many times. Ask anybody that knows me. I've put this shiny side on the outside, which then does not make it food safe. So be smart with that. So watch for that shiny side. That is your tip number two, because I do it all the time. Okay, and all our boxes have perforations, so they're really easy to put together. So all we do is literally just go around and fold all those. I'm gonna be super duper fast here because I believe Alana only gave me an hour. And you know what? I like to create in an hour because then after that, you kind of just lose, lose interest, right? And I don't want to lose you. Okay, so these boxes are fantastic because they can be decorated on all sides. So you can do the sides, the bottom, the fronts, everything. And that really, and you know what? It's great. I give away bundles, people's all, yes, absolutely, right? Totally, because then they don't have to pay $10 for a card. <laughs> and it's homemade. So voila, there you go. Our box put together, just as simple as that. The two ends tuck in and now you have that fantastic box ready to go. Yes, it is a food safe box, Susie, absolutely. Food safe and I put lots of goodies and treats in here. You can even put whatever you want. But what I'm, I usually put um, the mini cards and envelopes in here. So this is great. Um, for those of you who are demonstrators, uh, this is a great card class or workshop you can provide because then everybody gets a little container and then inside they get a bunch of cards that they get to make to go and then that is your workshop. So hopefully this allows you to think about that and move forward. Okay, so the top of this box, I'm not going to decorate the sides because we don't have enough time. The top of the box is pretty much five and a half by three and three quarters I believe so what I've done is I've pulled out a memories and more card from the pack and we are going to use that and you can see these are four by six so they don't fit so we are definitely going to have to chop that down but I want to layer it so I've got some smoky slate here which is already five and a half by three and three quarters so I cheated a little and I've put it on um here to measure so that will be my top so if that's five and a half by three and three quarters then we want to create an edge with this one and so we're going to chop this one down so i'm going to chop this down to five and a quarter so we get a nice view of that framed um smoky slate you could also put one eighth of a pattern behind it but i'm going this way so the other great thing about memories and more cards is um, they don't require a ton of stamping because you can also use the stickers and they're a great way to bring to the cottage, to the cabin, wherever you're going to actually create with. So that's what makes it a lot of fun and simple and easy to do. Okay, so we have that piece. Now we have that. So that is our frame. And like I said, we're going to case the caddy a bit here. So I've twisted up what is actually shown there. So now we need to um, stamp some pieces. So I'm going to stamp them for you, but I did do a little bit of cheating and pre-did them. But I'm going to show you how we can do this fast because it is, it is a lot of work. It is a lot of work when you have a lot of pieces. So if you're using this or another one would be, let's say pansies or what else has a lot? Um, any of our stamp sets that are a lot and you want to get them done, you wanna do a lot at one time. So what I like to do is use my Stamparatus and I'm going to need the spoon and I'm going to need um, salt and pepper shaker. And I'm going to also need um, spatula, 
knife and some chef hats there we go so i'm just gonna plop that in just like that oops lost one where am i here just throw that on there because it's no biggie there we go and this is a great trick i used when i was making some of the cards for today and then I'm going to get a piece of white and then a piece of, um, what do you call it? Crumb cake. Why don't, where is my pieces? What the heck? Okay, I have them here. Hang on. Yo, sus. There we go. Nope, that's not crumb cake. That's soft sweet. That is not what I need. Okay, so I'm just gonna snip me a piece here i for some reason am losing a lost my piece so this one is gonna go there because these are just gonna get all die cut stick that there so then i know where that goes and then i need a piece of white which is now mia as well um Uh, oh, right. Okay. I know why. Never mind. Ignore me, folks. Ignore me for just one second because I'm not thinking straight. There we go. Okay. So now we need a piece of wood. So now I can just stamp this all at once. I need to adjust a bit here. Not enough room. There we go. Okay. Didn't I have another magnet sitting here? Oh, there it is. Ha! This is what happens when you start crafting first thing in the morning and you're not really awake yet. Okay, so I need two inks. I'm going to use my Memento for these two. And then I'm going to use so, um, early espresso for the top, to, for my shaker and my spoon. There we go. And just push those down and not work. That's always great, isn't it? But see, this is the beauty of Stemperatus is I can just get that in there. It's got a lot of um, rubber around that. So I would probably cut some of that off. Okay, there we go. Oh. It's got that one spot there that I don't like. And there we go. So look how detailed that is. I just wanted, oops, if I can hold it, to show you how detailed those are and how much you actually get in um, all of that um, stamps and these rubber stamps. Because normally you usually see that in a polymer stamp, but um, on these rubber ones, you actually get quite a bit of detail, which is beautiful. So now these all have matching dies as shown here. Um, so all I have to do is line those up or drop my dies, whichever one. Um, but they don't have the little hats. So um, due to the joy of technology and magic, I have already pre-cut a bunch here already. So all we have to do is assemble. So I cut the knife and I um, just colored the handle with cinnamon cider because that's the same color that matches ours. Um, and I chose this gift specifically or this 3D project because it's Father's Day this month. So this is going to my um, father-in-law with a bunch of treats in it or cards. I have yet to decide. And this one, I same one that we just stamped. And here I've used the spatula and that um, I colored with Bermuda Bay, and then I have a bunch of little hats, a couple tags in case we need them, and um, the shakers, which we need, and of course the little hats. So I'm going to leave that in there so I don't lose them, okay? Okay, so this goes together like that, which is kind of like what they have in the catalog. 
I think they just use a different background, but that's all good. So we're gonna glue this down. And I do like to use my Tombow liquid glue so I have some room to move things around because when I can't get my head right above the camera, this is what I like to do. Ta-da! Okay. Um, and then we also need a phrase, right? So we need a phrase. So we're gonna use our sentiment. Oh yeah, and I wanted to put a piece of vellum on here. So I'm gonna cut that vellum down to, let's put a little, just to give us a little more pop. And I really liked this card because it kind of reminded me of Picnic. So this piece, and this is just a scrap piece I found. So let's see, four and a quarter. So four and a quarter, I'll go two and three quarters and see what that gives us. I'm just guessing here. Really, you usually go a quarter less, right? Or half an inch less. So then you get that nice round, but I don't... Oh, look at that. So we keep that because they might need that. Oh, I could stamp on this too. Ha ha ha. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, no kidding, right? I love this checkered pattern. But this is a memories and more card. Remember that. So that is what I'm using there. Um, and in the caddy, I believe, they show... I thought I would use gold. So this is from the Elegant um elegant sweet collection i always forget it laura's usually the one that always tells me you know what sweet that is and we can use that one there as well and i'm gonna bring back that gray in here with the sentiment and the sentiment i'm going to use so it comes with four i really use this one a lot i don't know but i i didn't realize i used that one the most so we're gonna use sending a dash of spoonful so that way we have something different and um to share with you versus what i've already created i was like wow i really like that one okay block ink and we're just going to use memento because i'm sure it's something all of you actually have and i have my punch here and oh there it is okay so boop, 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 boop. Color, color. Just stamp that on there. There we go. Where is my dirty chamois? Look at my chamois. Do you all have a chamois? I think somebody asked that question yesterday. But look how black mine is. And let me tell you, it still cleans. Never ever think that, oh, it's too dirty. I gotta throw it out. Hells no. Mine has been going forever. And it's black like that on both sides. It works fantastic. No. Um, and then we're going to cut this out. So I'm going to try and center it so that I can have everything running through. Oh, this is one of our tags, by the way, um, or labels, which is one of our punches. I love punches because they, um, make it quick and easy to work with. Simply elegant sweet. See? Thank you, Laura. You rock. Um, and that is gonna go here so everybody usually always goes how the heck do we actually um, glue down vellum so the trick with vellum is to just hide behind the pieces that you're actually working with so um, in this case my label is gonna go mm, maybe right about there so I would stick vellum uh, stick vellum glue just underneath there so I'm just gonna use my stamp and seal and just mark that up. And actually, most of the time, you don't even really see it, just depending what you're actually doing. So look here. I use Stampin' Seal Plus, so you can kind of see where it is, and that's where I'm going to make sure my label sits. Okay, I thought of using linen, I thought of using blue, but then I went, no, I really love this gold, so we're gonna use gold. Um, I know that really doesn't go with cooking, but we're using it anyway. Okay. So we're gonna build this up and I'm just gonna put a couple pieces or a few pieces, I guess, probably too much. So that way I can actually um, do some kind of uh, backing on the back here with my ribbon. And all I'm going to do is create, oops, if I can hold it, a zigzag pattern. So then that way a bows, so that way it looks like 
um, it's been tied. And to do that, all you do along the back is crisscross applesauce. So, um, I don't know, I always think of that because every time I teach my kids how to tie their shoes, this is what we do. So I'm just going like that, and then I'm gonna turn it and make figure eights here, and have that going like so. And then I will cut that. So we'll get our scissors, and then you can flip it over and take a look. Looks pretty good, I think. What you think? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Love it. Awesome. Glad you love it. Cut. I don't know why I always do that noise. <laughs> Weirdo. Um, and then that will go right there. A little too long on that end, but we can cut that also later. Okay. <clears throat> so now we're just going to sprinkle this all around with our utensils. And very similar to what they actually have in the catalogs, just slightly different. Just need to figure out where we want to put this salt and pepper shake out of this. Because it says sending you a dash of kindness and a spoonful of love. So we want to make sure that's happening. I don't want to cover, I don't want to cover that up too much. So I'm just gonna sprinkle. Just like we would with um gems, right? So I think I think that looks good. So here's another little tip that I always tell all my scrapbookers and you can do with your cards as well. And that is to always, when you're designing and you're not sure how everything's gonna to go together, but you want to be able to tuck and pull things apart, then whenever I've got my, you know, photo or my embellishment or my ephemera like this, my die cut, I just make sure I leave enough space around the edges to be able to tuck. And then I can always come back and add in more um, dimensionals afterwards, okay? So I'm going to leave that all open until we decide that this is where we want to go. So that is going there, because now I can tuck. So I have lots of room here if I wanted to hide the spoon a bit, whichever, but I probably won't, and um, play around with what I want where. Okay, so I do want one of these there, Salt, pepper, don't matter, one of them, because nobody's gonna tell me it's in the wrong spot when I gift it anyway. And yeah, that looks good there. So we're just using um, glue dots because glue dots really uh, make a big difference here. It's just easier than for me than using glue because I will get glue all over my fingers and then glue all over my project because that's just how I roll. There we go. And I think I want that spoon there because it kind of matches the phrase, which means this guy will tuck under. So I need a glue dot in the corner because remember this has dimensions right about, I think right about there, which means I can now put, I lost, I didn't grab my glue dot which now means I can stick a dimension underneath there because I'm not going to tuck in that corner. So grabbing my take your pick tool, I just pick this up or not and just shove that in there. Now my spoon has something to rest on and then I need a dimension on the back side there. So I'm going to grab my black minis so you don't see it as much and stick a little black one underneath. Hopefully I'm doing okay with time and we have like a few minutes to whip a card together so that that way I can, um, although I would like to say I lost a few minutes, right? That's a good excuse because of the fact that um, technical difficulties, <laughs> is that fair? Can I gain a few minutes of your time if I go over? Because we're, at, although I, we probably won't, but I'm just, you know, warning you in advance. Just refill your coffee cup while we're assembling here. And then we're going to start with the one card. Okay, oops. So there's my knife. I just, again, used the mini glue dots. Tuck that in. Now we can use some gems, but I want to use those hats. So I'm gonna grab these hats and use them as my little gems. 
I've already pre-cut these because I didn't want to waste your time and have you sitting there watching me stamp and put these through because we don't have a lot of time. So why am I not using my take your pick tool? Hello. Hello, Kitchen Louie. Duh. Uh, I'm going to put one over here first just to see and then I to figure out where I want to put a third or maybe a four. It's okay to go over. Oh, thanks. Oh, you're good. It's only 1034. Awesome. I do have my other um, device sitting there watching the clock for me. So <laughs> hopefully, and yeah, three. Okay. So the beauty of this, because it's not really embellishments is, oh, I think that is good enough, is that you can add a few more hats or whatever there because we're not using gems, so it won't add a big poof, although we could add gems. Okay, I'm just sticking another glue dot under there to keep this side somewhat down, and I'll stick one underneath that one, underneath the knife here to keep that side down, and... Voila! We are finito! Love this. Oh, yes, you have to totally get it. You know, I was a little nervous about sharing this with all of you because I'm like, what the heck am I going to make? How many projects can I go? I mean, especially when you have to follow Sharon Tremblay. Holy crap, those were amazing. And I have not yet played enough with that garden meadow set. And after seeing hers, I'm just like, wow, I really need to whip those out. And she did a fantastic job. There you go. Box done see so now you have this beautiful box and then now all we have to do is stick that down and because this is going to my father-in-law i um he's very gentle and um and he keeps everything i make for him <laughs> except for the cards i give him to give away to other people um which has been fantastic and so he keeps them all it's 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 quite cute um, and so I like to do picture frames for him. I like to do little gift boxes. And then I always tell him, Dad, you can really give that gift box away. I gave that to you so that you can put stuff in it and give it. He goes, oh, but it's too pretty. I don't want to give it away. And there you go. So um, it is all finito. Now, what am I going to put inside? Huh. Bishop's Famous Cookies. I can put Bishop's Cookies in here. Um, we can also put some chocolates. Who doesn't love chocolates? Now, I'm going to continue decorating here. And obviously, I ran out of plaid um, because this is a Memories and More card. But I would just use the pink and, or this is obviously polished pink with some gray. And continue finishing it. And probably stamp it with something. And then add that in there. But a little idea that you can do. Absolutely, Pam. You got it. And that is what I was going to say. Fill it with recipe cards. You can put your favorite recipes or somebody else's favorite recipes or your recipes that your friend or family or whoever you're gifting it to really loves when they come into your place. With it being COVID right now, you know, nobody's gathering. And so they can't come taste your amazing appies or anything like that. So it would be fantastic to put a few of your favorite recipes that you make so that they could make it too. And then you can have a girl's night of cooking and snacking and eating and have a virtual group. So um, I'm going to share. So I asked you to pick a three by four card. So that's going to lead us into the next one. And that is because I use the Assorted Memories and More cards and envelopes. So again, Memories and More, I know I'm a crazy fanatic of it. And um, I ended up using all the envelopes in this pack to make a, a um, another project, which I'll share with you at the end. So now I'm left with all these four by sixes, which by the way, can be cut down and put and created into recipe sheets. So you can use these to um, decorate and stamp and add someone's favorite recipes to and add them because they're perfect. They're four by six, so they go into any cookbook. Super duper easy. But the envelopes I all used, so I'm keeping these um, because they do have a use and I'll explain that later. But along with this pack came a bunch of mini cards. So, oops, that's gonna fall. So this pack also came with a bunch of mini um, note cards and envelopes. So these are all 
fit three by four. So they're like three and a quarter by four and a quarter and matching envelopes, which you can also add inside here into your um, little baggie with a little treat there and a little baggie box into your box and create some cards. So here are a couple. And again, I use the memories and cards, memories and more card pack. So this was a memories and more card pack. And I just quickly stamped and added that on there. Here's another memories and more card pack. And of course the saying what's cooking. So, so far I have two and this could probably fit four or five. One, two, three, four, there's four there. And that's two already. So we're gonna make another one and using the memories and more cards and we're gonna stick that all in there. And then now you have a whole set that you can add. Okay, cool, huh? Okay, so you already picked for me the three by four we're going to use. So we're gonna keep adding to this kit. So I'm just going to fold this down. So, cause I got lots of time. Everybody says I got a lot of time. So yes, I think it's a great idea. I think for my um, our next tea meeting, we should all share a recipe and then have to cook it all and um, just snack and eat while we have tea meeting. Ha ha ha, you like that? Okay, so I'm going to somewhat sort of case the caddy again because I want to show you that beautiful chopping board and how intricate and detailed it is. So this is going to be my base. And in fact, I'm going to grab, because I don't have cardstock here, I'm going to grab one of these. Oh, here's another great one. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh my gosh, you could just add one of these stamps. Just pick any one of these. You could either stamp it or cut it out and put that on here. And then on the inside, put what's cooking, blah, 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 and add a little gift card. That's what I would do. Oh my gosh, if we have time, we will do that. Okay, I just saw that. Okay. <laughs> Weirdo. Okay, so I know I have two of everything in here, so I'm not too concerned about what I use. So, um, love this. Maybe we'll use the green. Um, yeah, we can use the green. The reason why I'm being picky and choosy here is because um, I've chosen to use Misty Moonlight. Um, maybe I'll use the bird. Oh, we did amazing things. I definitely don't want to lose that one. <gasps> Look at that one. Oh, we could do lots with that too. Okay. See, these cards are fantastic. Okay, so obviously these are the same size. That's not gonna work well for us. Oh, I guess I could've used one. No, let's not. We got no time, we got no time. Keep it going in, keep it going. So I'm gonna grab my smaller paper trimmer to get us going here. And this is three by four, which then means I have to cut this a little bit. So we're just gonna cut off um, an eight. <laughs> just so I get a little wee bit of the blue showing. Don't need much, don't need much, just cause I want to frame it so it's not, well, you know me, I always like tone on tone, but I'm just shaking it up a bit here. There we go. Then we have a little bit of that blue showing through there. So I'm just gonna quickly assemble it. Bring on the ideas, people. What else can you put in that little paper pumpkin box? Come on, we got recipes, we've got treats. Um, what else? Oh, you could even put drink recipes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yummy, yummy. Could even have all that, you know? Gift cards with some more stuff in there, right? Why not? Oh, I just did a bad thing. Um, which is, where's my stamp? Uh-oh. See, this is the great, oh yeah, that's right, it's online. <laughs> it's over here, duh. Oh yeah, so I need this little chef hat. So I'll just clean up the rest later, okay? I'll put that there. It's got a lot of, I can see myself making lots of movies with that one. And I'm gonna grab, we got lots of great colors going through there. So I'm going to grab polished pink. Yeah, I think that would go really well. 
And I'm just going to, um, I just realized I made a mistake. I shouldn't have glued that down right away. Cut out the birds before, yeah, totally, Jessica. Why didn't I think of that? Duh, what a waste. Absolutely, that would take it and let it go the extra mile that we need it to go and get more out of our supplies. Dum, da, dum, dum, dum. Totally. Why didn't I think of that? Right, Jessica? Brilliant. Okay, make sure that is your tip. Another tip for today, which is cut out and use whatever you can, which is what I usually do too. I always, if I ever need the same color, I always die cut in the middle. So then that way I just cover it up and I'm not wasting another sheet of paper. Right? So there we go. So now we need the dies, which are sitting right here. Surprise, surprise, I'm not searching for them. And we're just gonna grab our mini and move those. And we're going to grab some Misty Moonlight. Maybe I can fit them both. And some crumb cake for that. I'm gonna switch it this way so you guys can all see. And Using the mini, numbers, numbers, one, two, it tells you what to do so we don't have to think, right? And we're going to use, because um, I haven't used that one yet. These ones do not come with a stamp. They are actual dies, so that's why I'm going to use them. And here's the beautiful chopping board, like, look at all that beautiful green detail in there, okay? Hi, Kathy! You're not working today? Or are you just on a break? So you get to join us, because that is so cool. Okay, oh, it moved. Oh, it moved. Oh, it crashed. Welcome to my world. Okay. Sorry, just, okay, I'm just gonna screw that. I was trying to line it up properly on there, and that's not working. So tape you down, it is fine be that way so because these sometimes get a little fussy if you don't have it lined up at the end very well in between chores <laughs> awesome okay so I want to show these to you <gasps> I missed on the end there okay wait I can't show those to you because I missed on the end oh la la what happened there I got too excited at all your comments and watching and I didn't even notice that I didn't get the end of the chopping board. So let's run that through a second time. Oops, oops, not lined up, oops. Really screwed up. Okay, I'm just gonna get another piece to make my life easier. It's hard to do when I can't get my head underneath there. Okay, so. And because you know you're all watching me, so now I'm all nervous. And then I make mistakes. There we go. Let's show that. How cute is that? Hee hee hee. Aren't those cute? Okay, let's try that um, chopping board again. Because I obviously did not see it hanging off the edge. See, if we were all together, you would have been screaming, Hey, what are you doing, Nemi? Don't cut yet. Because um, right now it just... It takes too long to type. By the time you would have typed that in there and I would have got it, um, I wouldn't have seen it. So this doesn't work on my table here. It's moving. Hang on. It was moving too much on there with my uh, craft sheet underneath. So I'm just going to try that again over here. Bear with me. Oops, I screwed that up again. Hang on. I tried to show you, but I'm just going to have to do the beauty of it over here. There we go. Okay. Magic, magic, magic. Here we go. Look at that. You could dry brush that too. Or you could add ink and then run it through the machine. Either way, but I just love the detail on that chopping board. It is huge and super duper cute. Okay, so we did that and we did that. So now we're just gonna put that chopping board on there. And then we're going to also add 
our two pieces, you two utensils, any way we want on there to the side, however we like it. In the catalog, I think they did it straight, but I'm not going to. So that's how we're going to do that. And then we need a sentiment. And obviously my sentiment is going to be happiness is homemade because it's nice and thin and we can get that on there. Put that there. How am I doing for time? Oh, I got 10 minutes. We're almost done. Yes. Um, then, because the next one's at 11. So we don't want to miss that. And then, love your, Oh, thanks, Kathy. Off for the weekend. So my problems with me. Yeah, it does. The smaller emboss and cup machine is a little more sensitive, but once you get the hang of it, it's good to go. I don't like that. That looks way too boring to me. I think we need to bring in more color. <laughs> so let's bring that pink back in. It's just too boring. Clean that up. Pop that back in there. Um, and if you need to go, don't worry. I've created an album with all of my creations and then after this i'll take photos of these two cards or the box and this that we've made and add it to the album so you just look for albums along the top which is always a pain in the butt i know not always easy for everyone to find so just look for it there usually i use my paper trimmer maybe I know, and try and get that so i'm just gonna flip that Oh, look at that. I practically put it in the same spot just so I have a straight edge um, or not. Yep, yep. There we go. And I still don't have a straight edge. So hopefully, hopefully that's straight. Who knows? Slightly crooked. Oh yeah, slightly off. So let's cut that down and to make it not look so crookedy, we're going to do some fancy edge cutting here. Oh, fancy dancy. And there's our card. Now we just need to assemble. Next is Nicole's photo print. Oh yes. Oh, I've been wanting to see that one because you know, I've got a million tr trees and pines and I'm wondering, do I buy another set? But there is some really cool things they've done with those, with that set. Oh, it's just this whole three-dimensional thing that is really nice. And that's what I love about these two is every little piece can is like adds that little, all these little die cuts adds just that little touch that makes it go, hmm, so nice. Okay. So I'm going to put this uh, right about there, I think, which means these guys need to come down a bit. I don't want to take away from too much of the pattern, but I also don't want to. There we go, right about there. So um, if I was smart, I would have used adhesive sheets. Again, forgot, as always, not to use adhesive sheets because then I wouldn't be sitting here trying to glue all these intricate little locations without getting glue everywhere. Duh. So, adhesive sheets, that's another trick and tip. Or if you have a Xyron, you could always run it through the Xyron as well. That'll work too. But, adhesive sheets is way better, faster, and you don't get that glue in between there. Yeah, that cutting board. I'm trying not to cover up that cutting board too, too much because damn, it's cute. It is. It's super duper cute. And it's a little spin of what is actually cased in the caddy. Where's my minis? Okay. Can't find my white minis and I got two packs of black minis going on here. What is up with that? Okay. So we'll just add... I guess I could have probably fit. I'm mean, a little going excessive a little here. I probably could have fit um, the regular size, but that's okay. That's okay. Okay. And then we need some linen. And I know I pulled 
my linen thread out so that way I was ready. Here we go. Have you noticed when you make cards, because I'm a scrapbooker at heart, um, scrapbooking is <laughs> what I love to do first. And that's what got me into Stampin' Up! was because all the products coordinate with the DSP and it made my life easier to quickly catch up and do all my scrapbooking. Plus back in the day too, you would start doing pocket pages, which was a lot of fun and, and easier. <clears throat> it's still starting to trend back again. But I find when I make cards, my desk is a lot messier and crazier than if I was actually making a scrapbook page. Go figure. I don't know. Maybe it's because all the pieces are smaller. I don't know. But <laughs> anybody else have that issue? Natural twine tied through the hole. Absolutely. That would look stunning. I didn't do that here only because I'm flush and flat and... Um, I really wanted to get that pattern in the blue there, but yes, you need to do that. It makes, it just adds that little oomph, but, um, do you want me to do that? Would you like me to do that, Cindy? I could definitely do that. I just, uh, I knew I was putting some down here, so I wasn't too sure if that was too much twine, right? Um, it would be nicer if it was a thicker twine, right? And then you get that really look like it's hanging there's a card that was shared on instagram i can't remember who it was if i find it i will add it to my album and she actually put twine through there or some kind of thicker and it made it look like a kitchen scene it was it's stunning so if i find it i will case it in my album so that you have it as a reference to come back to later so there's our finished card which is a twist of what is actually in the catalog and shared in the catalog using three by fours and um, and the memories and more pack. So all that is left is to stick that down. And um, because I'm a sucker, let's see what it say. Won't ever forget. Yep, we don't need that one. Okay. So I could have easily just went to my stash and cut out a piece of three by four from cardstock, but memories and more you always get lots extra so just use what you got and like it was shared there i just could have cut out the birds and then save the rest for this and there's our card homemade is happiness and you got lots of room on the inside we can even add a little piece of whisper white here so that that way you could even turn this into a gift card holder or any color really like you could take one of these stripes this here and stick it there and that would be that would easily be a gift card holder and so you could see you can fit a gift card in there no problem and now you'd have that little card so add that to our little collection here so here's our little box which would be open you could even put recipes on the inside add there's three in there now so now we've got we have this one which I made earlier and another one that I made earlier and then now this one we've just made together. So that's three and then I add in three envelopes to three and I look I still have room to make two more cards and add that in there right. Every time I generously use my dimensionals I think of you and smile. <laughs> yeah I'm like I use way too many dimensionals. <laughs> You know what? I've been using foam adhesive sheets a lot too because then you get more surface coverage and your card doesn't sag as much. So I'm a sucker for that as well. So a HomeSense gift card. Yeah, totally. Or even a grocery store gift card, right? Like Superstore, Sobeys, um, any of those. Co-op. Well, you give them co-op, then they can use it for gas or whatever they want, right? Um, you could also put inside here um, a recipe card for cookies, and then you could add that in here um, and uh, easily put, you know, the chocolate chips, any dry ingredients that would go with it. Is it a paper? Yes, this is a paper pumpkin box. So that is what we made here. And now it becomes a little gift. So I'm a sucker for giving gifts. So I like to make all of these and that's ready to go. So that case two of the pictures in the caddy. 
um, with a twist, of course, using something different. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, Linda. So now I'm gonna share with you a bunch of projects that I've already made, which are in the album as well. And you can reference that whenever you want. If you need inspiration or you'd like to copy and share it with everyone, by all means. Okay, so when I first got this set, I was like, what am I gonna do? So I made this card and, um, you know, it's just a simple card. I think it needs more texture, but I added it to my album anyway. But because I really wanted to see what all of, um, how well these actually stamped. So um, thanks, Sharon. Thanks, Laura. Glad you all loved it. Talented girl. Aw, it's all because of you. Because of you, I'm talented, people. Like, if you don't give me the motivation, it just doesn't happen. So there you go. And then I tried to make toss salad or something here and threw in the word for you in there. And then on the inside, just put sending you a dash. So um, real simple, easy to put together, uses the hand pen trim, which scallop edge, which I think Alana shared yesterday. And um, threw that in there. You could also go this way. I think I would have, if I was to recreate this card, I would probably go this way, throw my bowl here this way and just put a sentiment. Make it really simple and easy. And you could whip off these by the bunch and get those sent out to anybody. Okay. And then um, this one, I can't take all the credit for. It was a collaboration that was made during one of my Facebook lives. And again, remember I showed you that template in the beginning. So here we use the same pattern. And then I use the scallop rectangle um, to cut this out. Um, and un in behind all of this, obviously, are all the strips of the new in colors. Uh, so that was added in there. And then we decided to turn it into a shaker's card. Is that Bailey's? Is there? Yeah, absolutely. There's Bailey's in my coffee. It's the weekend. I will not deny that. <laughs> and then use some polished pink to actually make the label. So this is a shaker, shaker. So again, real simple and easy to use and a great way to show how you can use the negatives to actually make the card, right? So, and on the back side, what I should have did and will do next time is I could have um, stamped all the images or better yet, just blend a bunch of colors along the back side, then punch them all out. So you have these funky colored um, utensils and then you could use that for a card and then use the negative here. So that way you're not wasting anything, okay? And then this was one of my favorites. And this is, um, I hope it looks three-dimensional. So this is a kitchen card. So I wanted to show the backdrop of the brick and mortar as my tile along the back of my cupboard um, wall. And then here I just took some of the um, World of Good. I think is it is. is that what it is no it's not really good um the big pack of dsp in our catalog um i didn't use a lot of the wood grain because the wood grain was um wider so i needed something smaller here's where i wish we still had the plank 3d because i would totally make these cupboards into shaker car shaker doors right and um easily throw that on there so all i did was take my um basic gray right marker and made handles so that's how i made that and then use the basic gray underneath then i used the counter and i cut it at an angle here just to show that it's a counter and a little strip with barely a gap in between so it looks like i hope that it is sitting on the counter and then a little tag that says happiness is homemade and all the beautiful pieces in there to showcase um, the cooking that is going on. So hope you like that one as well. Easy to recreate and do. And then um, there's this one. So old but new and many of us, so I, I got this inspiration from my kitchen because I have this big, huge bucket. Okay, it's the party, it's the Pampered Chef um, spinny thing and it holds all my utensils so I wanted to show utensils in a jar and the only thing I could think of was a jar of labels so it was perfect so brought back this old um, shaker card threw in more of the um, ice cream corner thank you I'm glad you're all loving these um, note to self tip I did not put enough because when I hold the card up 
you can see it's not really reaching. So I would probably fill this with more of um, more sequins to add in there. So that way when the card's standing up, uh, you can get more out of it. So that is how I made this card. So jar of labels and the jar punch, um, the because uh, I had to stamp the background so that it, you can kind of tell it's a jar. And then the shaker domes for that. And then all I did was cut out the utensils and threw that all in there. Um, I thought of putting more because in my kitchen, I do have way too many spatulas and wooden spoons. So you could easily fill that with a million of different colors, wooden spoons, just something, you know, different to think about. Okay, and you sold me on the set. Awesome. It's already on my list. Okay, and now my last and final, oh no, I got two favorites. So I'm saving the best for last. So here is one which I was going to do today, and this is a slim card. So here I've used expressions in ink with soft succulent around in the background. And then this comes from the Garden Meadows die, um, die set, which Sharon shared with us yesterday. And I really, really wanted to showcase this beautiful chopping board. So that's what I've done here. Um, and then it looked kind of plain. So with Karen's help last night, I added um, some gems on there to give it a little bit of pop. And then on the inside, I added a couple of the shakers and just said sending you a dash of kindness and a spoonful of love on the inside. So um, they are easy to use and easy to go. Yes, Rita, I do use just regular um, business envelopes. Um, which I'll decorate or I will cut my own using our retired envelope punch. It all just depends on who um, I'm, you know, who I'm sending it to. Um, sure, Rita, send me your address <laughs> and maybe I'll give you, you want the slimline one? I can easily whip this one together. So this one was a lot of fun. And again, um, who was it that mentioned? You could easily add twine in here and because I just realized it's popped up and I did forget to add the twine and I would think would be perfect idea for that. Just to spice it up. One thing I also didn't do on here that I wanted to do and completely forgot was do some blending with um, pale papaya in the background and some um, grunge look to it. So because I forgot, I added the gems from the Genio. So this is one. This one's probably my favorite card. And, you know, projects and projects. And I said I wanted to make a recipe book. So um, this one is probably my son and I have been working on this and he is super duper excited and I can't wait to fill it up. But anyway, here's a recipe album that we actually created. And um, this is blank on the front right now because he has to come up with the name. So we're going to call this volume one. And um, I don't know, we're, his name is Bishop. So if anybody's got name ideas, comment below. So we thought of Bishop's Cafe, Bishop's Bakery, um, Bishop's, I don't know, what else have you come up? Bishop's Restaurant, we just say Bishop's Restaurant is kind of funny or the best of Bishop or something like that is what we also thought of. So you can see this uses the um, expressions in ink paper um, and then I punched and stamped and cut a crap load of those and then using my right one, Bistro. That would be a good one too, Bishop's Bistro. And we're going to call it Bishop's Bistro Volume 1 because I have no clue when he's going to finish. And as you can see, it's already getting thick. So I only made my spine a half inch. So note to self, if you make this, make it one inch. Bishop's Eatery. Okay, I'm going to give him all of these and he's going to decide what to put and we're going to put that there. So then on the inside... Again, memories and more cards, they're four by six. They fit in here perfectly. So remember I told you I had all those envelopes? So this is an envelope mini album. And so what I did was I glued all the envelopes together and then covered them to actually use them. Bishop's Bistro, exactly, right? So we're going to write recipes on here. And then on the back, we're going to put photos of what he makes. So then he has that as a reference. Um, and that is why I used the four by six envelopes. And then I kept, remember I said, I was gonna use these, they're not going to waste. So we're gonna use these to put the recipes on. And then as well, every page, let's use this, is a pocket page. 
so we can keep building and adding recipes in here. So here's a picture of my son. So um, we already have one which we need to write the recipe for. He loves tacos in a bag. So he makes chili or tacos and then throws it in there. So super excited that we had tacos in a bag. So I just wanted to show that. And then here's the thing. So every one of this is actually using the pattern party, which made my life easy. And I whipped this album together in less than 30 minutes because it came with 12 different patterns and there's 10 envelopes in the pack. So it made my life super duper easy. And it didn't waste because these are four by six. And then for the other piece, I just used the back side of each. So you see both patterns, the A and B side of the DSP and use it as the envelope slot there. So these are all empty because we want to add photos as we go along. So I'm just showing you the inside. So again, these are all envelopes and all the beautiful papers. See the coordinating backside to each one of those in there. And there, this one's my favorite, I think. And he has to decide which sex, what kind of sections we're going to put these in. And then I just added photos of him. So there he is. And I will tell you, um, when he cooks, he does not cook without his hat and his apron. So I wanted to make sure that was there. And I covered these in the little baggies so that they don't get dirty over time, right? So his fingers don't get all there or whatever. And it's dirty. And then there's my husband because my he, my son is inspired because my husband's a baker. So he's the one who really got Bishop into baking and cooking. So um, that's what's happening here. So again, um, that is our my mini album and probably by far the reason why I bought this stamp set and why I chose to make this. Okay, so I'm just going to flip you or drop you. I don't know why I'm Butterfingers today. <laughs> so Butterfingers, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so um, those are all my projects. Again, they are in an album in this Facebook group. So you can go there and get a better view of um, all the pictures. This recipe would be an amazing, yes, it would be amazing mini album class. I actually have a couple planned for this summer and um, that would be a fantastic. Or maybe you should just lead one. <laughs> Amo. So I think we can create that one together a lot. Um, it's the Baileys. Yeah, I wish it was the Baileys. I don't know. I think it's just, I'm so excited and I love these projects. I was really impressed with how much and how far I could go with it. And I was, I've been itching to share them with you. So I'm glad I did. So I'm going to say goodbye and hop on and check out Nicole's um, pictures that are next. So I did take photos just to remind you. So Nicole's is a photo presentation, so that should be there um, already. And then come back at 12 o'clock. So grab your lunch at 12 o'clock and come and join us as we watch Wendy. And then we have um, David at 1 o'clock, Laura at 2, and then Carrie at 3, and then 4 o'clock with Alana and wrap up. So um, most of those will be um, already posted and ready to go. So... Uh, don't worry if you're a few minutes late. So thank you everyone for your lovely comments and for joining with me today and this morning. And I will um, catch you on here later this afternoon. So keep on stamping. It's a beautiful day to hit your crafts room. So get a couple hours in today and get some crafting done um, from all of this. I'm not getting out of my PJs. Yes, way to go, Rita. Love it. I already got my craft shirt on. So I'm crafting all day today too. So take care and thank you for joining me. Happy stamping.